So imagine you have a car, which is actually hard for me because I do not have one, but bear with me. You have a car, and where is it now? It's probably parked somewhere, either here or at home, because you are sitting here. So it is currently doing nothing. And even when you use it, you will get stuck behind a traffic light or in a traffic jam. So while you're using it, you're not always using its full potential or power. So now let's take this example from the car and apply it to a computer. When we think about it, our computer actually has the same two problems that our car has. We're not using it all the time, and even if we are using it, we're not always using it to its full potential. So this is exactly where Gollum comes in. Gollum allows you to share your computing power with other people in the distributed network uh, when you are not using it as much as you have power for. It also works the other way around. When you have a huge task that you want to do on your computer, which is going to take hours, you can use Gollum to add some extra computing power and get the task done faster. So, how does this work? Hopefully I gave a clear overview of the initial step. Uh, if there's any more questions at the end, uh, please note them down and we're happy to answer them all. Um, so how does it work? Here there's an overview of a schema of the Gollum network. Um, the requester nodes are Gollum people that use Gollum, which are requesting tasks from the network. Providers are the nodes that give their computing power to the network. And in the future, we will add developers that will be able to write use cases onto Gollum because we, uh, as Gollum Factory, cannot think of them all. So let's go through a step-by-step -step, uh, approach how this uh, a computation would work. The requester will fill out a form with all the specifications of the task they want. For example, the input file, the price they want to pay, and other settings that are needed for this computation. When this is done, they will run a local test on their computer to ensure that this task is valid before sending it on the network. When this test has passed, they will ship it to the network and it will distri be distributed to all Gollum nodes. One of the idle Gollum providers receives this message and wants to pick up this task. So what it does is it will download the files and it will start the computation. After a while, it is done with the computation, so it will send the resources back, but the requester cannot be fully sure this is exactly as it uh, requested the task. So what it will do is it runs some small tests locally to confirm that the result it receives back is actually the expected result, and when this is the case, they will pay the provider. This is an example of our first use case. Uh, currently, a Gollum is live with Blender rendering, and here we make a comparison between running the same Blender scene from Gollum and from the Blender UI. As you can see, when the Gollum node is already done, in about 40 minutes, the Blender node is only at 8%. A few hours later, uh, about 12 times, um, the Blender node is finally done. But this is nothing against Blender, because Gollum will use the exact same Blender under the hood. The big difference here is that Gollum runs the computation on 40 computers, while Blender only uses one. This is the last slide of the introduction. Uh, these are some screens from our app, and they empower the flow that I described earlier. In the first screen, we see the wallet, um, where the users can manage their funds. We use GNT to pay for the computations, which is Gollum network token, and we pay Ethereum to pay for the gas for using the Ethereum network. Below this, you can change your settings, for example, how many resources you want to give to the Gollum network. In the second screen, you can see the form that I was talking about. Here, the tests have passed, so the task is ready to be shipped 
onto the network. You also see some other settings, like the current bit is 0.1 GNT per hour. And when we press start task, we will move to the last screen where we get an overview of all currently computing tasks. When you hit the details, you can see which parts of your Blender render are already received back and you can almost live see the picture fall together. Next step. This is where I'll take you on a journey through our user experience in the last year and how um, we grew our application to be ready for real Blender users. The approach that we took to prepare for more users is to research, empathize, evaluate and improve. We started off with a desk research to find out who our Blender users really are. After that, we needed to get quantitative knowledge, qualitative knowledge <laughs> about what their needs were and how they would want to use our application. We decided to go talk directly with the Blender users and they gave us great feedback. We split those conversations into two parts. In the first part of the conversation, we asked them to use our application to do a rendering without any of our help. This showed us really well how intuitive the application was and at which points we could improve making it more intuitive. In the second part of the talk, we dove in deep with those Blender users to talk about every single detail of the process that they just went through. This gave us a good understanding of how they saw the things that we designed and how they were trying to use it. After these talks, we had a huge list of tasks that we could pick up to improve their user experience. <coughs> One of the key events in our UX journey was the Gollum Mainnet release. Yay! Yay. <laughs> So, why did we go to Mainnet? Firstly, our community was really expecting it of us. In our initial roadmap, we made a um, wrong estimation. Um, so, <coughs> we really needed to push from that side. But we also knew that to get real valuable user feedback, we had to move our application out of the laboratory environment and into the real world. We worked hard to prepare both the Gollum core and the graphical user interface for the mainnet release in the time we had, but the main problem was to organize tech support. We made a schedule to ensure that at any time two developers were on call to answer any user questions that would pop up. Then, on 10th of April 2018, we finally went, went live, armed with loads of coffee. So, we pushed the button, and then... <laughs> emptiness. Nothing. No questions asked, no problems. Nobody seemed to have picked up on our news. First, we started to doubt ourselves. Maybe we had underestimated the potential of Gollum. Maybe <coughs> we overstretched. We don't know. But after a few hours, we noticed that the news hit off and our tech support that we prepared carefully was definitely needed. In the week after the release, the testers channel on our rocket jet exploded. We had over uh, almost a thousand users on the network in the first week of release and sometimes we noticed that even with three people in the tester support chat it wasn't barely enough to make it but we made it and thanks to this we had a good understanding of what issues the users were facing we were able to benchmark the network and scale up and see its full capabilities as a comparison, the test networks that we used to test on were always between 10 and 
on an extreme case in a Christmas holiday, it was 50 notes, uh, but it was never, never more. So a thousand notes was a ginormous skill for us. Also, because the developers were on tech support ships, they were able to get closer to the, to the users, get to know them, and get to know how they use the app, which was very valuable for them to be able to develop better afterwards. And last, but definitely not, not least, we had very happy users after these uh, ships. It was very rewarding to see so many people happy uh, with our mainnet release. So we could never have gathered so much feedback and so much uh, information back to us to improve our applications if we wouldn't move out of our comfort zone and make this big step for the mainnet release. Here you see some of the growth that I was talking about earlier uh, from, for example, the Blender users' uh, interviews, uh, but also the mainnet release. Um, this is in December 2017, uh, the user interface. Um, which I feel is, also, is still very technical because it was made mainly by technical people. Um, but in the last half a year, we've improved a lot, uh, boarded a lot of user experience designers, and that made us able to grow and uh, make the app more usable and user friendly. We couldn't have done this without our awesome community. We have a super uh, amazing group of people in the testers channel uh, and on Reddit that are great to help each other out. Usually we only need to explain an issue one to three times and then a snowball starts rolling where users start helping each other. At this point they will only reach back out when something is new uh, or something is uh, good to share. So great shout out to them.